very bitter. So uh, everything uh, I have said in this series uh, um, is the truth, nothing but the truth. Truth and time, they live together, they coexist, and of course, time will tell uh, if what we are hearing today is, is truth. And even if we look back into our lives, we see that some of these things have said, you can have the testimonies that these things are true. If you look back into your life, so you can have that testimony. So uh, I want you to just be patient with me as I discuss this. Um, in life journey, you will be exposed to both negative and positive people in life's journey. In our life's journey, we're all going to be exposed to energy drainers and energy boosters. You will always have to make choices. And of course, life is a series of choices. That is why you have this opportunity to listen to a discussion like this, the power of influence. People's attitudes in the season of our lives, we either encourage us or discourage us. You personally, you have to find out which way you have to go. It's your life. It's personal to you. The decision you take is none of anyone's business, per se. Although, the decision you may take in your life may affect some people, but you will be the first person to have that effect. Proverbs 13, 20 says, He who works with wise men will be wise. But the companion of fools will be, will be destroyed. So please, choose your friends, the group you belong wisely. Proverbs 22, 24 says, Make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man, do not go. Proverbs 14, 7. Go from the presence of a foolish man when you do not perceive in him the leaves of knowledge. If you know that somebody is not, you will know. I mean, you have, you have discernment. If somebody is not telling you the truth, you will know. If somebody is deceitful in dealing with you, you will know. So the Bible is saying you should take action. And what is that action? Go from the presence of a foolish man. Don't stay there. If you stay there, even if you are wise before, you could become foolish. When you do not perceive him, the leaves of knowledge stay away. There's an adage in the uh, in Yoruba land that says that when you use a leaf to wrap a soap, after a while, that leaf itself will become soap. Is that not true? It's the saying. And that saying is true. You see, there's, a thing, uh, there's one thing God said in his word. In Genesis 11, verse 6. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they will, and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they pro propose to do will be withheld from them. God knows that. That if you determine to make changes, you can tell me, Oh, Pastor, you know, I have taken some wrong decisions in my life. I've laid a very bad foundation. You know, I don't know what to do. You have opportunity as long as you are still alive to make changes. You can make changes. You can correct a wrong foundation and make it solid. You can reinforce a foundation that was not good before and make it good. That is why this word is coming to you for you to look into your life and make changes where it is necessary to make changes, the choice is yours. The choice is yours. Proverbs 20, verse 19. He who goes about as a talebearer reveals secrets. 
Therefore, do not associate with one who flatters with his lips. Don't go talk to somebody you know is going to tell, take your story to the street. Don't do it. If you, if, you, if you have spoken to somebody before and the person exposed whatever you have spoken or the person carelessly released the, the information, don't go second time to talk to that person. This is what the Bible is saying. You can do it. You have the power to do it. See, what I'm saying is this. Based on that Genesis 11 verse 6, you must communicate properly. You must have the same language with your destiny, with the purpose of your life. You must have the same language. You must speak the same language. But when you are doing something different, something contrary to what you know is the desire that you want to achieve, the purpose you want to fulfill, your aim in life, if you are doing something opposite achieving that plan or that purpose, that uh, this design destiny, then you are not wise. Because God knows if you determine to make changes, if you communicate properly, you will achieve that which you plan to achieve. God said the only way to stop these people when they determine in their heart to build a tower is tears to reach heaven, to go shake hands with God. God said the only thing we can do to stop these people is to distort their language. So one is speaking German, kaput. The other one is speaking French, au revoir, monsieur. The other one is speaking English, goodbye. And they are saying the same thing per se, but they don't understand what they are saying. So they scattered, God scattered their language. That was the instrument God used at that time to stop the plan of man to build a tower or kind of stairs that will go to heaven to go walk and see God over there. Praise the Lord. So there is nothing I'm saying that you cannot do. It's just determination. You have to determine to do the right, the right thing. Jesus Christ was speaking in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. He says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, whoever, and do, does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Please, build the structure of your life on the rock. It will not fail. Jesus said it here. But the one who is foolish, but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sound. And, and rain descended. The floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall. So what Jesus is saying is that in every gathering, there are two kinds of people. Some people are very smart. They are wise and some are foolish. In every gathering, even among the time of Jesus Christ, he was speaking to them. He said, some people will hear this saying. They will do what I'm saying. When they do what I'm saying, they are wise. But when they fail to do what I'm saying, they are foolish. Are you going to do what God is saying to you today? This is from the scripture. If you do it, you are wise. We influence each other. Either we like it or not, we influence each other. And one very good truth in influence is that I can influence you in a positive way. I can influence you in a negative way. You can influence me in a positive way. I can influence me. You can influence me in a, in a negative way. The environment that I live can influence me in a negative way can influence me in a positive way. The city where I live could influence me in a positive way, could influence me in a negative way. The country where I reside could do the same, influence me in a negative way or in a positive way. My friends, you know, um, you know, uh, the group I belong, but now the choice is mine to filter every information and take the one I think is beneficiary to me. That is my business. If I know you are influencing me in a negative way, I got to take action. Because the Bible did not say I should love you more than I love myself. I have to love my neighbor like I love myself. So if, if I know what you are trying to do or you know, 
your association with me is impacting my life, I have to withdraw. I have to withdraw. Because my brain is wired to know when there is danger. I told you there are three basic things your brain will, will know, will recognize. It will recognize other things, but these three are basic. Good food, or food, if your brain you know, perceive good food, your brain will know it. And your brain will, will desire to eat it. We take your hands, go after that food, put it into your mouth, and let it go down there. Your brain will tell you that. And if your brain sees, or your eyes sees anything that is attractive, beauty, anything beautiful, human beings or structure, beautiful, your brain will tell you this is beautiful, go for it. And when you see danger, when your brain perceives danger, your brain will tell you this is dangerous, do something about it. But now it's left to you to do what your brain is asking you to do. If it, in the, I'm, I'm saying when it is normal. Praise the Lord. So all these things I'm telling you, if they are true, if these things are tr the truth and nothing but the truth, you will know. Honestly. You, I mean, your brain will tell you. And you got to do something. So we make use of uh, two laws to explain this thing, law of the group, and then we make use of the law of entropy. In the law of the group, I told you, you, ke you keep on belonging to a particular group, you associate with this group, you will become like that group. Easy. Easy. It's not only praying. You will become like that group. If you stay long, you go every day to a restaurant to visit a friend. Every day you go there to visit a friend. Every day you go there to visit a friend. One day you go to taste the food. Even if it is sushi. The food that is not cooked. That some people love. One day you go to say, let me taste. I, I see people come here to eat this food. They say it's not cooked. Let me taste it. You will taste it. That is, that is the law of the group. You will. If you associate with bad people, watch out. You will become bad one day. You begin to exhibit the, um, the attributes of bad people. Honestly speaking. And the Bible clear it. Do not be deceived. Evil communication does what? Corrupts good manners. And that is why you got to choose right. The power of influence. You can argue from today to tomorrow and say, Pastor is saying nonsense. But time is going to tell. Time will tell. They work together. Time and truth. They are cousins. Husband and wife. You can separate them. Praise the Lord. They are friends. Time is going to expose and reveal if what you are hearing is the truth. Or not. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians 15 33. I do to you already already. Do not be misled. It's a good version. Bad company corrupts good character. Bad company corrupts good character. And um, if you have to find friends, I will encourage you to look for somebody that will add value. Values, even not just values, into your life. Look for people like that. Click with people like Joshua, people like Caleb. You know, in life, we have enough of negative people. Honestly speaking, we have enough. They're all over the place. In fact, it's ratio 2 to 10, like I told you. 10 people bringing evil reports, contaminated the old, the old camp, caused distortion to the purpose that God desired for these people. There are few good people. It's ratio 2 to 10. For every two people you see, you will see 10 bad people. For God has given us the opportunity, as we are discussing, to know if this person is not adding values to my life. And the next thing I have to do is what? I will take action. Thank you. I will take action. But that choice is a personal choice. I can tell you from today to tomorrow, I can counsel you, explain this thing to you, it is you that will take decision. I cannot take that decision for you because you are responsible to do that. Praise the Lord. So, the other one I used before we see what we can do. Let's say we have made mistake. What can, we have, what can I do? If I have the wrong foundation, how can I make this foundation good? The next one is the law of entropy. And this is a natural law. 
Though is a law explaining, you know, the law of second uh, law of thermodynamics. That things, things move, things, there must be something happening to something. Law of entropy. But anything you leave, just leave it there, right there, without touching that thing. It's not wise. You leave it there, but you think you are not doing anything, something is happening to that thing. If you go back to look at that thing, it's not going to remain the same state where you left it. And I make use of you buying a brand new vehicle, put it in a garage, leave it there. After some years, go back there. It will depreciate. In fact, in the market, you go to a dealer. You go to a dealer, you sign, uh, you, 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 you got brand new vehicle. Listen, as you are driving that vehicle out of that dealership, are you listening to me? You sign it. You close, you, you bought it. You, you drove it out of that you know, uh, dealership. And then you thought about it. Let me check. And you turn back. It is not the same value. Because you have driven it. Because the title has already been given to you. So if, if somebody is going to buy it, the person is not the first person who owns it. Hello? The law of entropy. Anything you leave unattended, if you live your life unattended, it's not wise. You live business unattended, it's not wise. You leave uh, your finances to, to, to default. I say, somebody is going to take care of it. Nobody will take care of it for you. Your life, it's your life. You take care of your life. You take care of your health. You take care of your finances. You take care of your relationships. You take care of your associations. It's you that we have to take this decision. Of entropy, anything you leave unattended, we eventually depreciate, and if care is not taken, it's going to die. So, and uh, we make use of many examples, but now today, what if uh, I have made a very bad choices, or I laid very wrong foundation, either of my life, either of a business, either of finance. What can I do? What can I do? And I kind of try to think outside the box and put some things together that can help us. First and foremost, first and foremost, understand the power of choice in all you do. Understand that when there is life, there is hope. You can still do something. You can choose on your own to arise from your slumbering and take some actions and make some corrections. That you begin to see changes happening. The many people they come, they say, and it is true. Let's say you have been smoking before. You are a strong smoker. When they, when they, when they take uh, um, X-ray of your lungs, it's not going to be the same with X-ray of somebody who has not been smoking. Right? But they will tell you the earlier you quit, the better. Now when you quit, after some time, you go back to your doctor. After some time, they, then they take X-ray again. They begin to see changes your lungs. Is that not true? Many people have read it. I've not, I've not seen it, but I read it. They say you begin to see changes coming into your lungs compared to when you are smoking and when you are not smoking right now. So, the first thing you will, you will know is this. If you have made some bad choices, if you've laid the wrong foundation in anything, the power of the of, the, of influence. Then you go back to the drawing table. You look you look at your life. Where are those reasons, or why are the reasons, or what happened? Why did I make these mistakes? So what can I do to correct these things? They begin to trace back, and then you begin to say, "Oh, yeah, this guy is the one influencing me." I wouldn't have been smoking, but this person influenced me. And listen, if you continue to go to that person who influenced you to smoke, trust me, you're going to go back smoking. 99.9%. It's just like what I told our children. If you go to school, you go to school, you want to find friends, and you hang around with friends that they don't care. They don't do their homeworks. 
when professors are in the class, they are on their Facebook, they are on their Twitter, they are on their Instagram, they have the hair prog, they are hearing music while professor is talking. And after the class, they don't know what is going on, they don't do their own work. You are gonna with people like this, or people that smoke, they smoke uh, weeds and they take some, they say, they, I gotta be, I gotta be high. You hang around with these kind of people, you don't need a prophet to tell you your future. You don't need, you don't need to go and tell a prophet to tell me what is going to be my future. You got your future already. It's going to be very challenging for you to break through if you're that kind of a person. You go and ask people that made it to Olympics. Go and ask them how much effort they will make to make it to Olympics. Do you know some parents started preparing their kids from when they give back to them to go to Olympics? Hello? Go and ask. People that are good either in boxing, either in tennis or whatever, go and ask their parents. If they have the opportunity, if you talk to the Williams, they will tell you how much they, they work hard. So when they hit that ball, if you are not prepared, but that ball hit you, I hope you will not go to the hospital. They prepare them. They go for exercise. They carry this weight. They carry that weight. If they bring out their hands, if you are a man, you are not strong enough, they give you one blow. You know it's not ordinary woman giving you a blow. You, you can black out. And what happened? Preparation. In fact, good preparation enhances greater performance. So, so you, you look into this. And try to make sure you don't take the same road that led you to failure. You did talk. Praise the Lord. Am I talking to somebody today? We influence each other. Seriously. You, we influence each other. And I told you ab about the vagabonds. Mr. Borov, I told you of Henry uh, Firestone. I told, I told you of, um, uh, I mean, Ivy Firestone. I told you of uh, Henry Ford. And I told you of uh, this guy, Edison, Thomas Edison. You should remember all these things. I'm not looking at my book I, because I, I read about these people. I love what happened to them. I'm not talking about, uh, oh, are they born again? I, look, see, the spiritual is standing this way. And then, and then some, some, some law, of, uh, some social laws are standing this way. You got to understand the two. And that's where we make mistakes. Some people, they think they will only pray and pray and pray and pray and pray, and pray to get breakthrough. You pray, but prayer without works is dead. I mean, faith without works is what? It's dead. So you just pray and pray. You don't do anything. That's what is happening to us back home in Nigeria or African countries. People go to the mountain top. People big, big churches. Big churches. That you see, big, fantastic churches. But people are poor. No factory to work. One man recently uh, in one of the polytechnics in Nigeria made an electric vehicle. It's in the social, it's in the uh, social, this cyberspace now. He made electrical vehicle with local materials. The man, the man demonstrated it. And the man explained how he can do this. And he's looking for who can market this. They're looking for who can pump money into this. You got to put money into something to make something work. Praise the Lord. But people are not going to put money into things like that. Instead, they will take that money from where they're supposed to put it and go and hide it somewhere where people, they hide it to. Who go? Some of our money is in city banks. Some of our money is in their shares. Some of our money is in fidelity, fidelity, whatever they call them. And then I will go there to borrow money. They charge me tax. Interest. They charge me interest. They will not say, oh, where are you from? Let me see. Oh, you are from Africa. How oh, we get Africa here? Instead of giving the, you 2%, we're going to give you 0% because your, your money is here. They're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. So you... Look into your life and see if there are things you can do to bring changes. It's very important. That is the first thing you do. What is the first thing? The first thing you do is understand the power of choice. 
that you can make changes now. Don't delay. Don't push it forward. As I'm talking right now, put down, write something down. See the mistakes you have made. If we don't learn from the past, you don't learn from history, you made the same mistake. You made the same mistake. Some people, are, they are crying foul now in Ukraine. Something like this happened before in Ukraine, though not on this level, maybe like 2015 or so. 14, thank you. And you never learn from that. Some people don't learn, learn from that. Now they are saying, ah, I, all the money I put here, everything is gone. You, you have to diversify. You have to blend your money. Excuse me. You have to blend your money. That's what we call emerging economy. And we have what we call established economy. You don't put all your money in emerging economy. No. You diversify. You put it in some established economy where they already have some things established. Where they can keep the record. Where they can trace the record. And that is why people are moving money from, from a, a emerging economy into established economy. I mean, the Bible says anyone that has will be given to have what? They will take from somebody who does not have. And they will give to who? That's what is happening. Money from, uh, from Soweto, money from, from Ghana, money from Sierra Leone, money from uh, Nigeria, from Cameroon, is being taken to, to where? To established economy, Swiss bank, to Switzerland, to America, to where they know they can trace it if they want to do that. So think about that. Make changes. Think, put some things down. It is not rock science. This is something we can understand. The Lord will grant us more understanding in Jesus' name. Now, the next thing you will do is this. If you discover the truth, don't leave, don't go. Stay on the truth. Amen? If you discover that this friend is a quality friend, this friend is a quality friend, don't let that friend go easily like that. But it's not easy to get a quality friend. There are too many bad people over there. Jesus was talking, good example, Jesus was talking. Jesus was talking, and then the word Jesus was saying was so hard. He was speaking very hard. And if you go through um, uh, John, I think it's in John, John chapter 6. Read the whole of John chapter 6. Jesus was talking, was putting, combating them, just like today. Today. You know, those places where they tell you the truth, people don't want to stay there. They don't want to stay there. They don't want to stay there. They want to go where they lie to them. There are some churches is are here all night. What? All night is dancing and dancing. And little thing, little word we do what? If you go to places like that, you don't need to go and register for any gym. Because you already got your 24 hours, whatever, 20 something thing you are. It's area is dancing all day. Dancing. They don't have time to listen to what you are listening to. They don't have time for something like this. I know some of you you love this. I can see how you are. I can see your faces. You are happy. You are some don't want this is not popular. Sometimes I I talk to my wife, I say, look, I hope all these things coming out will not drive people away. But some people, don't, they don't want to hear this. They, they don't want to hear. They, they will be frank in their face. They don't want to hear. So Jesus spoke seriously. And then when he, when he now got to check with me that um, John chapter 6, John chapter 6, when he got to verse 66, verse 66, John chapter 6, verse 66, are you with me right now? I love you listening to me. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Many of his disciples. Many of who? Disciples. The Bible calls these people disciples. Disciples are not just ordinary, you know, groupies. Groupies, groupies are not disciples. You know people they call groupies? You know, like when Michael Jackson was alive. If he's going somewhere, going somewhere, <laughs> what happened? Some people will go, they call up from office, some will just to see him, some may go there in the, you know, if it's coming in the morning, they may be there at 7 p.m. In the, in the, the, the day before and stay there. That, they 
because they want to see him. They want to have the front row, front row seat. And when he's talking, he can, some part of his saliva just to fall on them. So they can also have the same, you know, whatever. You know, some people are like that. Those are the groupies. But disciples, these are people that are ready to learn from him. They want to, the word disciple is from discipline. They get discipline. They listen to the Messiah. They, they go out on around with him. But since he lambasted them, he said, oh, this is too hard. They started going. And then he went to the closest disciples. Then what happened? Verse 67 says, verse 67 of John 6 says, then Jesus said to the 12, those are the chosen apostles, disciples, those from, you know, I have told you several times that apart from the 12, Jesus, Jesus had some other disciples, right? But the 12 are the real one that he called, he shows them. And then among that 12, he has the three that will take them to some places. Inner carcass, thank you. Inner carcass. Take them to some places where they can keep things. They can keep things. You should also have the same thing like Jesus Christ. Have some friends. Amen? Then among your friends, have the inner carcass. Somebody you can sit down with and tell. Say, don't tell anybody. And you have the proof that they will not do what? People have, you know, about disciples, it shows three. Those three, he will take them to some places. You know, he took them to the Mount of Transfiguration. He said, don't tell anyone until what? When the Son of Man is what? Glorified. And they didn't let it out. Maybe if, if he had gone with people like Judas. Ah. Got out. Maybe Andrew. But he went with John, Peter, and who? James. Then among those three, he had one other one. They said the disciple that God loves. John himself prophet, you know, said that, of course, in John chapter 1. I mean, in John, in, in the gospel according to St. John. And this was the disciple Jesus committed his mother to. Amen. He had some stepbrothers. He won't commit his mother to any of them. He said, Father, Mother, look at who? Your son. Son, look at what? Why on the cross suffering, knowing that he's going to die there, he committed his mother to that disciple that he loved. And if you read gospel according to St. John, it's quite different from synoptic gospels. And synoptic gospel at Matthew, second one, right? Tell me. Come on. Matthew, Mark, no. Tell me. Matthew, Mark. Look who. Look who, look who. See what the Lord has done. That should make you to remember Luke. Praise the Lord. So if you read the synoptic gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, you see that they have similar accounts. But if you read John, in fact, if you have just given your life to Christ, it's good to start from John and see the old detail of his ministry and all the rudiments of his ministry. So you should have the same thing. You should classify your friends. There should be friends you discuss food with. Food. <laughs> Don't let us analyze that. Because it's going to be a joke. And then if you look at uh, the, next, the next thing, is, you know, after you have done, Jesus, Jesus gave us that example. And then Joshua is another good example to explain this. Sometimes you will stand when you want to do repairs. When you want to make changes, you will stand on some things and then you will reference some point. Joshua, had, when he was about to go, called all the elders and called all the people of Israel. And he was giving them what I can call the last words. And he told them they have to serve the Lord. You know, sometimes things that come to us, they look so hard, they look so difficult. Sometimes serving the Lord may look so challenging, but serving the Lord is the best that can ever happen to us. Because anything you do for eternity is the one that has eternal values. I know you want to do this. I want to build houses. I want to buy cars. I want to do this. I want to. They are good. Not that they are not good, but seek first the kingdom of God. Take care of God first. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All these other things shall be added. So Joshua called them together and he spoke to them. Joshua in Joshua chapter twenty-four. So when you get to verse fourteen. 
Now therefore fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. Now, Joshua said this one, and this, this one, you should mark it in your Bible, and you should say it to yourself all the time. Talk it with your children. Talk it, talk it with your partner. Talk it with your very close friend. It's like, look, I have taken this decision. I might have made the mistake before, but I'm laying my foundation again. I'm correcting the mistakes I've done. I want to underpin that foundation. I want to reinforce that foundation so that anything I put on it can stand the test of time because storm will come. So Joshua said, but as for me and my house, you will serve the Lord. You should be able to say that. When your friends are trying to confuse you or you know, when somebody or a group is trying to you know, you know, distort your plan for God, just tell them, I have taken this decision. Nothing whatsoever will separate me from the love of Christ. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. So these are the things that we can do. But, but before I just close because of our time, we can, we can look at this. First, be intentional in whatever you are doing. Be intentional, have plan. So let's say I've made a mistake in this foundation. I want to correct this foundation. Have a good intention to correct it and follow that intention. Stick on that intention. And don't let anything change you doing what you think is right to do so that the, the mistakes you have made will not be repeated again. And then you can build more and more on it. So, when you are intentional, look at that structure you have built. And if you think that the structure you have built, as we have discussed in 1 Corinthians 3, 19, uh, 3 from verse 9 to 14, 1 Corinthians 3 from verse 9 to 14, if you think that this it's my intention. I want something good that can last the test of time. I want to build my life so that when storm comes, I can stand. I want to have the word of God in me. I want to you know, study the Bible. I want to have good prayer life or good prayer uh, approach to prayer. I want to have good approach to evangelism in serving the Lord, in going to church. I want to be dedicated. I want to listen to quality words of God. I don't want to you know, separate myself from Good word. As the word is coming out, I want my heart to receive it. I don't want my heart to, to be antagonistic to the word, the truth word of God that is coming to me. So when you, when you think about that, and that is your decision, then begin to look at the materials at which you are using to build this house. Begin to look. And make sure they are, as Paul put it here, verse 12 of that first Corinthians chapter 3, it says, Now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stone, Wood and straw. Ah. You know, you don't see any perfect person, right? You don't see any perfect person. And you don't see any perfect family. I'm telling you, you don't see any perfect family. Because we see carry this flesh, and of course, we live in a polluted environment. Let's say, for example, your finances. You are not perfect because you are a human being. You made some mistake in your finances. You build not only with gold, silver, or precious stone. You build with straw, wood, or stubble. A wise person will do something like we used to do to ordinary house. For ordinary house, if we see something we don't like, because house is a mixture, you lay good foundation. You have your wall, you have your doors, you have your windows, you have the roof, you have everything. Now, if you think that something is there, because you are intentional in your construction, something is there that is not, is not part of my intention for this, what do you do? You remove it. You remove it. We do it in a physical house. You remove it. You renovate that house. You remove that house. When we bought this building, those of you who knew that time, it was 2004, this was a former Jewish synagogue. Hello. We gradually continued to shape it according to our intention. 
because we want it to be a gospel arena. We want it to be a church. Sometimes you continue to remove bad things and do what? Do good work. That's how to correct any mistake. That's how to correct a weak foundation. That's how to, to, to build more and make it inten- to the intention that you want. We don't have this altar like this. We have one small, one small you know, altar there, a very small one like that. And then we remove that, we put the big one. We have the Star of David somewhere here. If you still look up there, you go to see the crown of David up there. It's still not gone because the last thing we're going to do right now is to paint everything, right? But gradually remove, you remove the one you think is not part of my intention in life. You remove it. And then the one you think is part of it, you put it there. Look at this. This what we call stained glass. Those of you who came like a few years ago, we don't have all this, right? Then we remove the old one. We, we do one. You put the new. You put the new. But you do it gradually so that it's not going to enjoy you. You do it gradually. It's not going to affect your finances. Because you have to do what we call prioritization. So in making correction, there is a power of influence. In making correction to your life as a building, look, look into the wall. The wall of your life. Not negotiable things. This is what we're talking What? The wall, the wall, the bearing, the load bearing wall are not negotiable. So, but the partition, the partition wall are negotiable, right? Then, so the partition wall you remove, you can put new one. But the wall that are not negotiable, the wall of your life that are not negotiable, all you can do is to paint it, to scratch it, and you cannot remove it. So, what are the walls in your life? I, if you want to know more about this, go and listen to part four. Things that you say, this is the boundary, this is the standard. This is the limit, no-go area. So maybe we, you have compromised on no-go area. But if you can see, you can still make it to sit stand. You are not removing it totally. Because, for example, if we remove that wall where we have, uh, where you see, you go out, as we are going out of the church, that wall, if we have removed it in the past, then we need an engineer to help us. Because people cannot sit up there again. What is carrying them there? What is carrying them there that they are very comfortable? What is that? Is the structural wall non, I mean, load bearing wall. So in your life, the load bearing wall of your life are the limit you set. Let's say you didn't set it very well. You can correct it, right? You can put steel. You can do something to correct it. Because some of us, we don't even have wall at all. We don't even have load bearing wall. We don't even set standard. That is not a good thing. You start from there. Look at the wall. Do you have standard in your life? Or anything goes. Do you have the limit? Don't cross this. This is the line. Don't cross this. Why are they fighting in Ukraine? Because one country crossed to another country. If it's you, maybe I don't know, your own country. Your life is like a country. How many people have crossed to your country and said, oh, welcome. <laughs> you want to be president of my country? Okay, come, come and uh, come on, uh, uh, who's making noise? Uh, president of uh, Ukraine, you making noise? Leave that place. Let uh, let somebody. Uh, uh, uh. Does that make sense? But that's how some people are living their life. Honestly speaking, the the seat of power in their lives, they can give it to anybody. The seat of power, seat of decision. Hey, you come and take. No, you must have limits. So if there are no limits, if you made some wrong things, you you repair. You put reinforcement. You put more concrete. You do so that it can carry weight. So that when wind will come, storm will come. Because storm will come. And storm span until we live here. You could have storm when you are a teenager. You could have storm when you are in your, in your 20s. You could have storm when you are in your 80s. In fact, storm of 80s are many. I'm telling you. Storm of 60s. Even storm of 60s are many. Ah, thank you. Recently, I wanted to buy, I wanted to squat there, to do something there. Then I, ah, ah, it was difficult to, ah, what is happening to you? I kicked myself. Spoke to, you that used to jump anyhow before. Ah, then I said, oh, my, my brain is telling me, take it easy. You are not like when you are teens. If you don't take it easy, you may have to take it easy in the hospital. 
Hello? That's how it is. Storm will come. But you put reinforcement, you do everything. Hello, we bless us in Jesus' name. Who let us, I think we will continue this. If I keep going, I'm going to spend one hour. And I've been warned because if I continue to do that, some people may not like it. So, I want to pray. Before I pray, just remember that as I explained to you when we are discussing about this issue of construction, this and that, you can always make corrections to where you don't want this to be, where you don't want that to be. Even if you have laid wrong foundation, you can correct the foundation. There is nothing you cannot correct. According to that Genesis chapter 6, verse 11, I think it's verse 11, if I still remember, God said, these people, if we leave them like this, if we don't cause miscommunication in their group, they will do what they determine to do. If there is no miscommunication in your mind, if you agree with God, you agree, you agree with the word of God, you agree with your destiny, you will get your destination, the mighty name of Jesus. Nobody can stop you. The only one that can stop you is you. In fact, we are our greatest enemies. Enemy with enemies within. That is the problem we have. Not enemy without. You are the, you are your you are your worst enemies. Because when you see that this look at what we are discussing now, why can't you just go back and listen again and make some make some amendments? For some we say no. Some will say, I have chosen, I will do what I want to do. Nobody, anyone can do anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, it is true. But the first casualty is going to be you. You are going to be the first person to be injured in that wrong decision. But may you have the wisdom to take the right decision in Jesus' name. So you have, you have the opportunity to make changes. If whatever decision you have taken in the past was wrong, don't repeat that decision. Praise God. And if it was not done right, next time you are doing it, do it right. And according to the natural law, it's, things will happen. Things will happen. If before you, you have neglected your life to chance by default, things come by default. Now you've heard of the law of entropy that anything you leave unattended will deteriorate. So wake up and take care of certain things you need to take care of. If it's your finances, put more emphasis, put more attention on your finances. Put more attention in the area of weakness so you can become strong. And the area where it is strong, continue to make sure it doesn't deteriorate. That's how people do it, even in marriage. In marriage. In marriage. If you know, you know, you know the strength of your partner. And you know the weakness of your partner. Some bad people, they will be focusing on the weakness. They will close their eyes on the good. They will never say, oh, you are very good in this area. Yeah. No, it's that bad area. And it's not say, see, you have, I told you. And it's not say, you see, see, I, I told you. And it's, it's, you see, see what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. But what about the good I did? Why can't you just thank God for the good I did? And don't lay too much emphasis on the mistakes I have made. That's how to bring, you know, peace. That's how to bring more love into a relationship, into anything, into even into office. But we can continue like this and I'm going to continue to shoot more and more and I'm going to get one now. I don't want to do that. But by the grace of God in part six, I will tell you more things that we can do to make uh, a foundation we have laid that may not be good, to make it good, to reinforce it. Or the superstructure, the thing we have built, if we are formally building for beauty, we can now go back and build for strength and you know, repair those walls, repair those windows, make those doors as supposed to be, close where you need to close, open where you need to open. We shall do that. And then the roof. And then the pipelines. And then the, um, you know, uh, the water coming in, the waste going out, which we are, I'm going to tell you what you can do to make things work better. I hope you have been blessed. Father, we thank you, bless you today, we worship you because we are a good God. Thank you for this opportunity and the privilege that we have to listen to your word. Lord, help us to develop more and more in that which you have told us. Help us, Lord, that at the end this will not come against us and say, oh, I told you and you didn't take steps. Help us to, take, to make a move when we need to make that move. Let us make the move right now, oh God. Blessed be your name.
In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. God bless you.